Hi, hello, how are you? Craig Chapman here, and welcome to Brutally Roll Your Own Backend, a short video series on writing your own low-cost backend for a Delphi application. In this series, we're going to be writing a couple of Android applications using Embarcadero's Delphi. The same application could be written to target iOS. In fact, Delphi makes it relatively trivial to migrate between the two. Uh, unfortunately, the push notification system for each platform is slightly different. Uh, and so for this series, I'm going to be focusing on the Android application. And perhaps I'll add the iOS uh, conversion later as an extension to the video series. Uh, the applications are going to use uh, JSON RESTful endpoints for their data and send push notifications through the Google Cloud messaging service. We're going to host our backend on a typical LAMP stack. So that's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So you could potentially host the backend even on a shared, ho uh, shared web hosting. Although there are one or two uh, technical requirements that might not be present with some hosts. So we'll go into that uh, a little later, but I'll be demonstrating using a private dedicated server, virtual server provided by Linode, and I'll be running the Ubuntu OS on that server. So in this first part, part one, I'm just gonna introduce you to the project. There's not gonna be a whole lot of technical information. I'm gonna leave the technical for parts two and onward. Um, so I'm just gonna keep this nice and uh, simple. The first part also is somewhat scripted, uh, but uh, subsequent videos will be off the cuff. You'll be watching a screencast of me writing the application. So let's get started on the introduction with a short story. So I have a friend, let's call him Michael, and he runs a food truck business. This is the kind of business that rolls up at events or outside your place of work, and they're really popular here in Texas. So one day Michael explained to me that he'd had some frustration at a previous site that he'd stopped. Uh, he'd run in and asked the receptionist to email everyone in the building to let them know that he was outside. Unfortunately, the receptionist became distracted and the email was never sent. So Michael stood around waiting, not making any money because he had no customers. And he was telling me this story and how it was a significant impact to his business. So I had an idea. Why don't I write an application for you, I told him, which sends a push notification or an email to your customers when you've arrived at the site. It's a relatively simple application. I won't charge you anything for writing it. And I then demonstrated a push notification so that he could see what I meant. So Michael liked this idea and he asked, how am I going to send this notification? Well, the food truck already has a tablet computer on board. He uses it as a point of sale. So I told him I'd give him an app to send out the notifications. Excited by this idea, Michael then asked, I have more than one truck operating. Could I use this on my other truck too? Of course, I told him yes. So he then followed up with, could it also report on how long each of my trucks has spent at a particular location? Yes, it could. And how about using it to award loyalty points? Sure, why not? Having told me about his multiple trucks and getting excited enough to request additional features, Michael did what all good businessmen do. He explained that he couldn't afford high running costs. No problem, I explained. I can write this application in such a way that it can run on whatever infrastructure your existing website is running on, or at most a $10 a month service. So never again will Michael's customers fail to realize that he's at their site and he'll be able to make plenty of money. And now I have to figure out how to do all the stuff I said I could do and on a shoestring budget and without getting paid. No problem, I'll make a video series of me making this application and post that on my blog and that'll make it worthwhile. So with that little story over, let's take a look at what we'll be building over this series. And I'll apologize in advance for the ugliness of this diagram. Um, at the bottom, we have the first of the Android or mobile applications, Add Notifier. This is a uh, application to run on the tablet, on the truck, and it's going to have the ability to send push notifications as well as generate the claim codes for the loyalty points. It'll also have a passworded administrative section 
that Michael can use to add and remove locations as his business evolves. So when Michael arrives at a site, he'll push a button on the application that makes a call back to the backend application. That's the ugly green box in the middle of the diagram. The call will be made using a RESTful API using JSON encoding, and it'll be provided by a PHP script. The script will look up all of the registered customers in the MySQL database, and it'll forward that information to Google's cloud messaging service. That's the one on the left in the uh, orange box. So Google will then forward the push notification to our customers' mobile devices, which are running the Notifier application. The Notifier application simply opens the, uh, or allows you to register the push notifications. So at some point, I intend to build the same app for iOS as well as Android, as I explained, uh, but for the moment we'll be focusing on uh, Android, specifically because of the Google Cloud Messaging. If we want to change this to be an iOS application, then we have to go through the Apple notification system, or uh, there is apparently a way that we can alter the calls to make the Google Cloud send notification to Apple devices, uh, but that's something that I'm going to leave as a, a detail for later. Okay, so before we come to an end on this first video, uh, I'd like to explain why I'm going to be rolling my own backend uh, and doing it to such an extreme level as writing all of the scripting and hosting it myself. The main reason is for the sake of this video. Uh, I'd love to be able to show everyone how this system works on a low level so that you actually understand, even if you use some other solution, uh, how the services are functioning under the hood. Uh, the next reason, of course, is the shoestring budget. So all of the uh, backend options available have some kind of cost involved and I felt that this was the lowest cost option, given that if you already have a website, you should be able to run this application. There are some requirements. For example, you need to have Apache or IIS running PHP with the curl extension so that it can call out to Google and with the MySQL extension and a MySQL database. But if you have those things, then this application should run. So the first alternative option, RAD Server, is probably the most ideal uh, product to use for this application. It already has RESTful API hosting built in, user authentication, push notifications, and a database. So this would provide an awful lot of the functionality out of the box. Uh, it's highly scalable, resilient, it's enterprise grade, would certainly be the simplest solution. On the negative side, unfortunately, the licensing doesn't fit our shoestring budget. This is targeted at larger enterprises than the one that we're writing the software for. Uh, it has more functionality than is needed for our application. I have no use for the beacon fencing, and while the API analytics would be interesting, they're not necessary. And finally, the uh, crushing point for us on this project is that currently this only runs on Windows, and I want to be able to run on virtual Linux servers or just about anywhere where we have access to PHP. So that's why we're not using RAD Server. But if you are building an enterprise grade application, certainly consider upgrading to RAD Server. Go take a look. I've left the URL there on the screen for you. The next alternative we could go for is DataSnap. It's got a favorable royalty fee uh, licensing system in that there are no royalties. Uh, so once you've purchased an enterprise edition of Delphi or RAD Studio, uh, you can use DataSnap without any additional costs. It's again familiar native Delphi code uh, and you have multiple hosting options for it. Unfortunately, just like RAD Server, it still runs on Windows only currently. Now Embarcadero are pushing into targeting uh, Linux and that's due in the next edition of RAD Studio. So hopefully RAD Server and Datasnap will also get the Linux support at that time. Uh, in addition, DataSnap, uh, while it can be coerced into uh, using REST and JSON, or specifically JSON, uh, it is a stateful SOAP-based communication system predominantly, uh, and that's not really suitable for our roaming mobile connections. It also requires at least the Enterprise Edition. I've listed that as both a pro and a con. Uh, everything that you see in my video series, you should be able to do with a pro edition plus the mobile pack. Uh, I'm not putting anything in this video series that requires enterprise, at least I don't believe I am. 
Uh, so that's why that's in there as a, as a con, it's an additional cost up front. Okay, we could also have used Web Broker. Uh, Web Broker is also royalty free. It ships with all editions of Delphi and it's actually been in all versions back to at least Borland's Delphi 5, probably earlier. Uh, again, it's familiar native Delphi code and it has multiple deployment options. Uh, unfortunately, it's still not suitable for us. It's still a Windows only uh, system. So that pushes it out for this project. Uh, it's also very low level and requires the most amount of work. And the three options that we've looked at so far from RAD server, DataSnap to web broker are listed both in order of decreasing uh, licensing cost and increasing work level. The less you pay, the more work you have to do for yourself. Uh, the backend that we're going to be building in PHP will require pretty much the same amount of work, but we get the advantage of being able to run just about everywhere. Uh, for anybody who's interested in building services with Web Broker, I did a skill sprint on this a while back. There's a link to my blog post for the skill sprint on the screen. Okay, third party BAS or backend as a service. Third, third party vendors uh, such as Kinvey or App42 uh, host a backend for you and provide existing custom APIs. Delphi Professional Edition comes with components already geared up to use Kinvey and App42, and they also have additional components which can uh, be used to leverage other backend providers. You don't have a server to manage that's being managed for you by the third party. They usually have modern RESTful JSON APIs, and they usually come with a free tier so you can start developing without any cost. Unfortunately, the the way that the costs scale with these services sometimes leaves a lot to be desired. For example, they can charge you per user, per gigabyte, per push notification. Uh, so this, the costs can scale quite quickly when you get outside the free tier. Uh, you're also trusting a third party to host your backend. So if that system should fail at any time, what do you do? How is their support? Uh, do you have a support line for them? When you call it, do they respond quickly? And what happens if the company goes away, if they go broke, for example? Uh, then you have an application which you've written specifically for their service and know where to host it. But you're also forced to work within their limitations, which means if a new technology comes along and you want to make use of it, then you have to wait for that third party to provide a suitable API. If you're running on your own server, which is what we intend to do with our project, uh, then you don't have that limitation. You can immediately begin looking at how you address that new technology from your server. Uh, you don't have a, a middle a person in the middle to get in the way. Okay, and the option that we've chosen to go for in this video series is to roll your own brutally, brutally because of the brutal amount of work it's going to involve to write this system from scratch. This is usually the lowest cost option you may uh, be paying a fee for the hosting of the application uh, and that fee may scale similarly per gigabyte of network transfer. Um, however, you're not tied to a particular API. So if your vendor starts charging you more than you think is fair, you can pick up your application and go install it on another vendor server and carry on running. You rely only on yourself so you don't have to wait for that third party to provide APIs or some feature that you need. You can go ahead and start building it for yourself. And of course you can use REST or JSON or any other protocol that you wish to use. Uh, as I said, the cons are the amount of work that you have to do writing everything from scratch and you rely only on yourself. Now I realize I put that in as both a pro and a con. The negative side of relying only on yourself is that you need to be proficient with administering your server. If you don't know how to fix a problem on your server, or at least to reinitialize it to its default settings, then when your application fails, which it most likely will at some point, then you're, you're stuck. You're not gonna know how to deal with that system. So uh, during this video series, I'm gonna be showing you some uh, administrative techniques. They're not necessarily the most advanced, but they'll get you started, uh, and some systems for making sure that you can restart and re-initialize your service if you need to.
Okay, so thanks for watching this uh, introductory video and uh, keep an eye out for next time when we'll look at provisioning a server for our project.